Everyone checking in on the stock market today. So bulls came out to start the new year and we are knocking on the door of all time highs in some of our major ETFs. We'll check out which ones they are. I'm going to highlight some of the major places that I'm going to be looking for trading opportunity in 2022. And we'll take it from there. Hello everyone, this is our last promo for the next 11 months. You know I love being a salesman. This one's for the Swing Report. It's an annual subscription. I'll put links in the comments of this video to a video explaining this a bit more, as well as a link to the website where you can get a previous issue sent to you as an example and use the code SWING2022 for this deal if you're interested in swing trading. So we got SPY here, and in our previous videos, we were talking about the daily consolidation of these major ETFs and saying, if the daily EMA 12 support holds, the bulls are keeping full control. And at this point in time, that is the case for most names. And we can see SPY is knocking on the door of all-time highs, 479. And today we got within $1.15 of that. So less than one half percent, less than a quarter percent away from that level. And on the hourly perspective, I do still consider that we need an hourly trend change back to the bulls still. So we came off the low of consolidation this morning, and yes, it was a nice bounce, but if we're gonna have confidence and follow through, we do need that hourly higher low and higher high to try and confirm this daily bull flag. So overall, bulls still starting fairly strong on the year. Just a note, I put out a New Year's video over the weekend if you have not checked it out yet, and that's the third year I've done that now in a row, and there's some really good information in the previous years as well. And you can just search Chart Guys New Years and find all of those videos as far as looking back and analyzing your previous results, looking forward and goal setting and everything in between. I'm also going to be talking about the MJ sector a bit in this video. And I talked in a video with Twitter personality, MJ Stock Trader. That's on our web or on YouTube as well. And I go a lot more in depth as to why I think that that sector is going to have some significant opportunity in 2022 after being a big dud in 2021. Check out the YouTube channel. There's a whole lot of content on there. QQQ, daily bull flag trying to shape up as well. Daily EMA 12, hourly trend change, back to the bulls needed. Again, it was a nice bounce off the low of the day, but we must see the higher low and higher high into tomorrow if we're gonna be looking back up at that recent high of 404.58 resistance. That's still about three quarters of a percent away, all time high is about one and three quarters percent away from where we stand. So the QQQ bulls do have a little bit more proving to do with where we stand. But as we know, Apple is one of the most important stocks in the market because of its weight in tech sector ETFs and the weight in the tech sector in the S&P 500. And it's at all time highs. So we know that's always a good sign when big daddy Apple is at all time highs. There can't be much fear in the market. There can certainly be individual pockets of fear, but Overall, bulls are back in the driver's seat, at least to start this year. We'll see how long they can keep that up. Semiconductors, daily higher low trying to form, very similar to SPY and QQQ. Did we change the hourly trend back to the bulls? We did not. So again, that's needed, but solid way to start the year. After a weak close Friday, strong close today, and we're looking up at the all-time high, 317.92, and then the all-time high right behind it, 318.82. Interesting to note, that watching the semiconductor space, we've been watching AMD, which has been pretty strong. Have to be cautious though, because if we, we could set a weekly lower high here and just tighten up on the weekly perspective. So this new little support level is important because if we were to see a bull move here, but fail 156.73, the recent high, and then break that support of 143.55, that confirms a daily downtrend and that confirms a weekly lower high being set. So again, whenever I'm looking in one direction, and this is clearly a bullish chart, in a monthly, weekly, daily uptrend, but I want the other perspective. If I'm a bull and in a bullish position, I take off my bull glasses, I put on my bear glasses, and I say, if I'm a bear, what am I looking for here? Because that gives me the red flags and the cautionary signals for the position that I'm in. I don't want to only be looking bullish and disregard anything bearish. That's how you get into trouble. So if I'm bullish, I'm saying, okay, well, the last thing I want to see is a lower high and lower low. That would be a big red flag for my bullish position. NVDA had a big upper wick on today's candle. So again, we have to be cautious because if NVDA drops down, it breaks 293.31. That is a lower high and lower low. And that is a weekly lower high being the result of this bounce. Interestingly, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductors, they've been extremely tight. We have been trading sideways. Look how many months, eight, nine months of sideways. 
and we just today made a very notable bull break. Look at the volume. That's the highest daily bull volume, highest daily volume that we've seen in three months. And we are at the highest price that we've seen in eight months. So that's a very notable bull break. And the bulls are hoping, condense it to the three month time frame. Bulls are hoping that that is a bull flag looking to new all time highs. Very healthy consolidation after a massive breakout post COVID. So keep an eye out for patterns that are long, drawn out, tightening. And one of the reasons that I'm going to be pointing out metals as something I'm watching very closely in 2022 is because it's tightening up for so long, not as long. The weekly time frame. I mean, we're looking at about a year of tightening. No, that's too much. We're looking at about a year. Okay. Yeah. A whole year of tightening. That's actually a little bit more than I thought it would be. But if you go back and look at search chart guys, intro to gold and miners, you will find a video from way back when, where I speak less confidently, but I was highlighting and able to say, we are watching gold and metals and miners in 2019, because this multiple year tightening range is due for a break. I couldn't say if it's going to be a bull break or a bear break, but I could say watch because volatility is coming to this sector. And when volatility comes, that means opportunity as a trader comes. And of course, 2019 into 2020, we broke a multiple year tightening equilibrium bullish. And I made more money in metals than I ever had before. Probably one of the first times I ever really traded it. And that was a good run because we were ready for it, waiting for that tightening range to break. So I guess while we're on now, nah, we'll, we'll get to that again in just a minute. We're jumping all over the place here. Tesla, astounding day for the bulls. All time highs back on the table. It's a monthly bull flag, unless bears prove otherwise. Monthly EMA 12 support. We didn't even test it. And just a massive turnaround. Daily trend change confirmed. Bull flag confirmed. Bullish response to crushing their Q4 delivery numbers. We also had Chinese EV names putting out their delivery numbers. But on the backs of Tesla here, the EV space had a really good day. And we're looking at 1202 and 1244 is the only resistance levels. That's all we got. Daily higher low is set. And we're going to have bulls looking to buy back burners. We're going to be watching for, look at just this steady five minute uptrend all day. We're going to be watching for next five minute oversold conditions, scouting an hourly higher low, tons of space for it to form. We're going to scout next hourly oversold conditions, looking for a daily higher low to form. We didn't get that hourly oversold last time around, which is unfortunate, but that just shows the strength. Bulls were front running hourly oversold conditions, didn't allow for it to happen. NVDA hit hourly oversold, a bunch of other individual names and sectors did as well, not Tesla. All time highs back on watch. NIO, decent solid day in response. Big, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but this move is a significant one in the last three days, but there's stronger names out there. E X P E V. Weekly perspective, trying to head back to the recent high. You've got LAZR. Bottom line is a lot of solid reactions in the EV space, but Tesla is the big daddy looking up at all time highs. Healthcare sector. So daily consolidation underway. Anything above 135.38 is a higher low. EMA 12 support test on the daily. Hourly RSI got crushed. We dropped down into the teens. I traded this bounce because of that. And I guess we'll go over that trade review. Now we'll do the trade review at the end, but daily uptrend still intact. Hourly trend change back to the bulls will be needed for a daily higher low to try and shape up. And the daily uptrend is our guide. Financial sector, quick little back test of EMA support, trying to get over 39.74 for continuation. That's the highest price we've seen since we got that little wave of fear back in December. And we have to get over 39.74 for a convincing follow through. From there, we zoom out to the weekly and we're looking back up at the all-time high, but a little daily uptrend as our guide. And we now have a new line in the sand, 38.97 key short-term support level for the bulls to maintain complete control. I always love after a V-shaped bounce, I always love when you have a new clear level to be watching because before that, you know, what's healthy, you got to use retracements and you got to be watching volume. But now that we have a higher low set, Keep it simple. If that level holds, there is no concern whatsoever for bulls. So it, it alleviates thinking. You don't have to think. If that level is holding, bulls in control. Nice and easy. IWM, 
tightened up for a few days here, starting to break resistance, but we did fail one level. This is a triple top, 225.73, 226.54, 226.75. We took out a few levels, but we failed 226.75 by six pennies. If that level breaks, there's a gap to fill at 228.54, but right now we're not breaking that high at this point. New line in the sand level, you could use 221.26, you could use 222.39. We're just setting these little incremental higher lows. We're looking for a bull cross of the EMA 12 and 26, but we need to get over 226.75 for bounce follow through. Weekly perspective, we're still going to be looking for a weekly lower high, but we're watching our bounce retracement size to gauge is this a bear flag or not? And at this point, we're making our way to the 50% bounce retracement. So that then creates the space for when we top out, we will scout a weekly higher low to be the result of that next consolidation. I'm interested in the cannabis sector, as I said, CGC, trying to base out. Bulls still have proving to do. We got to get over 979 to get to the highest price that we've seen in three weeks. And that'll be the first higher low and higher high daily trend change that we have seen in two months. So that would be notable. Aside from that, MSOS and USMJ already confirmed a daily trend change. Again, it's a lot of work. When you're in a downtrend on every time frame, you got to change one time frame and then you just zoom out and scout a lower high in the longer term. So MSOS, daily trend change confirmed, great, good sign, but you zoom out and anything under 3380 is just a lower high. So what we watch for now is follow through. Is it a bear flag or do we see enough retracement bounce follow through to get to 50% plus to create the space for an eventual weekly trend change attempt. More follow through is needed. Bulls must maintain daily higher lows. I have some exposure in MSOS. I have some exposure in CGC from today. I have some exposure in VRNOF, which I talk about in the video that I highlighted on our YouTube channel after entering last week. But watching closely for the reasons that I talk about in that video with the known catalyst all the way in November, but a known bullish catalyst is coming, which is nice to have as a dangling carrot, but it's still a long ways away. So I'm not getting too aggressive in this sector, but I am definitely paying attention. The dollar. So the dollar confirmed a daily downtrend, but this was a key level of 95.51. And if you look at the monthly time frame, we're in a pattern now, stair step pattern with a higher low every single month for seven months. And if that 951 level holds, 95.51, we're going to keep that pattern alive. And we're going to keep setting a higher low every month. So that weekly perspective here, it's the high of the bull move, higher low, double top, double bottom. And that's keeping the bulls in control with weekly EMA 12. And the metals responded real well to this two weeks of consolidation in the dollar. But with this big green day today, the metals took a big hit. So this is key for me as I look bigger picture in the metals, what the dollar is doing is key for me and bigger picture on the dollar we are scouting a six month lower high, anything under 103. But again, on such a long time frame, and here's another one a long, multiple year tightening range. This is going to break sometime in the next three years and give the most volatility that the dollar has seen in eight years when it happens. That's going to be notable specifically for commodities. So we could set that lower high compared to 103 this month or we could set it in eight months from now. So again, we have to keep in mind when it's such a longer term pattern, we gotta be real patient because it can take a long time to play out. And I am anticipating that we're gonna be talking about this pattern in 2023 probably. And it probably won't have broken yet at that point. And again, this is complete technical analysis, zero fundamental analysis having to do with the dollar or treasuries or money printing or rates or anything. And this pattern is the reason, if you go back and look at our analysis, my analysis of the dollar, little pat on the back here, we were bullish down here in the upper 80s when the world was bearish the dollar because I was looking for a six month higher low compared to 88.25. So with all that information, gold. So gold on the two month time frame. let's go to the four month. Again, that's a potential bull flag on the four month time frame. And if it is, we're gonna see new all time highs. And we got multiple inside bars forming and we got a tightening weekly range. I went over this weekend in a video, my ideal scenario is a weekly lower high forming and then a potential play off of 1753. Because if I'm gonna be bullish in gold, I need to see a weekly trend change confirmed to be looking back up at recent highs. If we drop down and break 1753, 
That's a confirmed weekly downtrend again, heading back to our recent lows, and that will be a red flag. So the trade that I am looking for is scouting a weekly higher low bottom fish for a longer term entry. Being very patient. Big red day on gold today. We got a four hour channel that we can be keeping an eye on. I'm doing a rough drawing job, but you can draw it a little bit better. You get the idea. Patiently waiting, scouting a weekly high or low play there. And what I would need to see for that to play out would be a bounce on the dollar that either breaks with no follow through or rejects from resistance and then rolls over into monthly consolidation, breaking 95.51. If that does not happen, I don't have any confidence in a longer term metals play, silver and gold. Trading today. I did a lot of trading. It was actually an adventurous day. So we had an ice storm here, first snow of the season, and woke up 5.30 a.m., internet's out. Okay, I'm going to wait a little bit. 6 a.m., internet's out. Okay, something's wrong with the lines. Ice on the lines, very windy, limbs are down, yada, yada. Got sweetie pants, got in the car, drove to find internet in a, a raging snowstorm, blizzard. The roads weren't bad. There was only an inch or two on the roads. I'm from Massachusetts. People freak out down here. No big deal for me, but it was fun. I had fun. It was still pre-dawn and it was a little adventure. I had my coffee and got to a parking lot, woke up Jungle Funk Joey, went over to the trader house, used the internet. But then by the time I got home, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, okay, well, this, this is way out of my routine. So I don't think I want to trade very much. And I also, I'm leaving Wednesday and I'll be gone for a few days. So don't miss me in the videos too much, but someone will be doing some content. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to skip the first week and I'll, I'll start trading the new year the second week when I'm back settled in and back from a little trip. But I just felt the flow and just went with it and didn't think, didn't overthink it. And so trades just started presenting themselves. And I thought, okay, well, if I you know lose a trade, then I won't, I won't stop trading. If I hit a day loser. And that didn't happen. So I think I ended up going four for four or something like that. And I'll just run through my thought process. First things first, XLV. I don't trade XLV. But if you give me an hourly RSI in the teens and you align that with a 15 minute RSI in the teens, low teens, almost single digits, a five minute RSI in single digits, I'm gonna play that bounce every time. We're in a daily uptrend. We're coming off the all time high. This has no business being that oversold. So again, I don't trade this ticker often. I don't even know if there's leveraged ETFs with liquidity. I think CURE is one of them, but I don't trade it enough to care. So I just used a larger position size and just traded XLV straight up. And I use a larger position size because a 1% move is significant. And so we'll do one trade at a time here. XLV, very beat up hourly and lower time frames. Hourly RSI 18. Put some eyes there to know that I'm really watching it. In a starter for a bounce, 138.48 would enter one more on a 138 break. So at that point in time, 138.48, so a good entry. My first entry is down near the low, it's right there. So if we had broken 138 without cooling off RSI levels, I would have entered a second entry and then gotten a bit aggressive. But only one entry filled and that was the bottom and then I just let it play out. And the best thing that I did was Take partial profit, out half at 138.80. So at that point, my break even is now 138.16. I can put my stop under the low and not risk a dollar. And again, knowing that I just had the morning that I had, that's exactly the kind of trade that I want. Risk-free, set it, forget it. And I'm glad that I did that because if I had stayed watching this bounce, I would have been bored to tears. This just did nothing for hours. And then it followed through. And my target was always an hourly oversold bounce, scouting an hourly lower high, keeping an eye out for EMA 12 resistance as a potential target. And into the end of the day, I just ended up scaling out my position. And again, as I'm, I'm heading into the end of the day on a day trade, I live stream half of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 3.15. So I know that once 3.15 comes around, I'm distracted and I can't do as good a job trading. So my initial target was 139.50, the mid 139s. But we got to the point in the day where it's just, okay, successful trade, I'm exiting, scaled out two positions. And again, no, no huge win. It's, it wasn't even 1%. But because I used a larger position size, it did end up being half a day maker. 
Okay, good. On to the next trade. At that point in time, I forget who was next. It was either CGC or IWM. It was CGC, I believe. Yeah. So CGC, very simple. I know I'm watching cannabis for bullish action in 2022. That's just the premise. Then I see a drop and a V-shaped bounce first thing, and I see that volume is going to be increasing. So I enter on the bull break of 902 at a new high of the day, and then just let it play out, and we got significant follow through. So that's a nice 5% plus move from my entry. It's probably more like 5.5%. And again, this is a, I entered a swing-sized position because I am entering for a daily higher low attempt for the daily trend change attempt if the bulls can break 979. So then held through the consolidation. Of course, every time I'm in a swing trade, I see these short-term moves on the hourly time frame, and it just kills me inside. Ah, oh, take advantage of that. That's a 4% pullback. Sell partial, reload partial. And then, of course, every time I do that, the next thing I know, I'm out of my swing position, and I don't have that exposure. So it's always a balance for me. How much micromanaging do I want to do here? But we ended up holding 924, held it again, held it again. At that point, I said, all right, I'll play off 924. That's either going to be our hourly high or low, or it won't. And if I stop out, I'll risk a little bit of the profit that I made on the initial move. So I doubled down at 928 on one of these pullbacks, stop under 924, maybe risking five, six cents. And then on the move here into the end of the day, exited before the live stream, right around 938 maybe. So a little 10 cent gain. And all that does is drop down my break even of my swing position 1% lower. So now I've got an average of probably right around $9, maybe just under $9. And that makes me comfortable on the swing trade to give the bulls a chance tomorrow to confirm the daily trend change by breaking 974. I need IWM to break that daily resistance I showed you. And I need CGC to break 974 to keep me in this swing trade. Other than that, IWM. IWM started the day nice and strong. 15 minute big bull move, break some daily resistances, reject from one of them. Big pullback. What is the most likely scenario here? For me, it's a 15 minute higher low compared to the low of the day. I'm watching the two minute time frame for clues and I am watching a potential two minute falling wedge. In the end, it wasn't a good falling wedge, but that is what initially got my attention to be scouting an entry. And I would say it wasn't a good falling wedge because we dropped through the support line here. And if we had held there, it would have been a real good wedge, but just lost clarity right down around that bottom. Here's an example of me micromanaging a day trade. And there's times where people ask me, you know, I post as many trades as I can. And I very often post what I'm doing, as you'll see, as I'm about to show you. But there are times where if you are not micromanaging and day trading and have many years of experience, you're not going to be able to place the same trades as me. Or you're going to place trades that have poor, more, that have worse risk or reward. And what I mean by that is exactly what I did today. So we're going to use TNA, which is the leverage DTF for IWM. Same setup, but this is what I was trading and micromanaging. So at 1129, I grabbed a TNA starter. So that was on this little double bottom right here. So just a starter. And that allows me another bullet, a little more ammo, more cash to manage this position, scouting a 15 minute higher low, knowing it's anything above 84.92. So make an initial entry, starter position. And at that point, let's just say it filled at, oh, I put the orders here. No, this, this one's not on there. It filled at 86.40s, 86.44, let's say. The low is 86.36. So yeah, 86.44 is my starter. So from there, if I didn't do anything, no, we'll not, we'll not do that yet. So for 44, from there, I made a second entry. I have exposure in MJ, which is at IWM related, so I'm going to be fairly quick to exit. In a second position of TNA, looking to sell half on a one minute lower high. So on that leg down, on this leg down, I entered a second half position. And that's when I started showing my orders. So filled 8601. So filled 8601, the bounce starts. I'm just looking to exit on a one minute lower high. Why am I looking to exit so quickly? Because I just entered two positions and that's the most that I'm going to fill. I'm not just going to keep scaling into weakness. What if we roll over and next thing we know, the sector's down 2%. That's how you get into trouble. As soon as I'm in two positions, my stop is set on a dollar risk that I'm willing to take. 
That's all the maneuverability I have. I can't micromanage anymore. I'm no longer in control of the trade. My hands are tied. So as soon as we start bouncing, I exit a partial position. So if my average was 86.44 and 86.02, then my average is 86.23. I exit half at 86.21, pretty much break even, not exactly, but I sold into that one minute bounce. We got a lot of follow through, but again, I'm quickly selling because I want my bullet back. I've got my ammo back as soon as I sell and I drop my average from 86.44 to 86.25, was it? 86.25 now because it was a little bit less than break even. So what does that do? It drops my break even and it gives me my ammo back. So with that ammo back, I re-enter again, 86. So where was that? It was here looking for a two minute higher low. So straight drop, looking for the two minute higher low compared to 85.76. So as soon as I'm refilled back on that position, 86.25 and 86. So now my break even is 86.13. I sell half at 86.17, small profit. So 86.13, sell at 86.17. That means my break even is now 86.09. Let's do it again. 86.19, I made another entry. Forget exactly where this one was. Again, all of this is shaping up for a 15 minute higher low to try and form, which has not formed at this point, but is attempting to. We can see the momentum slowing. So average 86.09, and I do another, keep clicking the wrong button, do another flip. This one was for 10 cents. So average is now 85.99, something like that. So I go from an average of 80, 84 86.44 to 85.99. I just cut my break even position half a percent. And you might say, why does that matter? That's a lot of work. Yes, it is a lot of work. I enjoy this game. I had fun doing it. It's good practice. I just sharpened my skill even more. But I've now got a break even at 85.99. If we drop down, I said, all right, I'm done flipping. It got to, this, to the point where I either have the right entry or I don't. And I put my stop under 85.76 and my risk is, let's call it, if I were to, if I were to exit at 85.69, that's going to be a 15% a day loser for me. And my target is a, at this point, I'm looking for an hourly higher low because it just got so drawn out for that 15 minute higher low to form that I was just looking for it to be an hourly higher low compared to the low of the day. So I was then anticipating if we get this bounce and if I am right, then we're going to see a bounce and I'll scout an hourly low or high but the risk and reward will be very much worth it. I have 30 cents of risk and my reward, even if it's a weak hourly bounce, I'm looking up at 87, my reward's a dollar if it's a weak bounce. And if it's a solid bounce, my reward is potentially multiple dollars. So that is how I micromanaged flipping a position three extra times, flipping a half position, one, two, three times, drop my break even, half a percent, and position myself well, I was, I was comfortable this entire trade. At no point was I uncomfortable. And the vast majority of the time I was green. Only time I was red was after my first entry, but knowing I have a second entry to maneuver with, I was not uncomfortable. So then the bounce gets going into the end of the day. Again, I'm live streaming here. So I was scaling out, scaling out around 87. And it ended up being, again, another half day maker. So we'll call it a dollar gain on 30 cent risk with the potential for further gains if the bounce had played out faster, but that's the way to do it. Reward was over three times what the risk was. That's what it ended up being, but it could have been more. It's a lot of talking. I'm done for now. I'll see you tomorrow. Do good things. Have a great new year. Check out the content. See you soon. So now in Adventure Time, we're heading into the very appropriately named Valley of the Gods. I was a mere mortal feeling like a very small speck in the Valley of the Gods. This is another spot with just a dirt road, BLM land, public land. Go at your own will. Camp wherever you want. Don't be a jerk. Pretty much the only rules. And there's another area that's similar to this, but it's more developed. They have tours where they take you in in Jeeps and it's all tourists and all that. But again, I was here, maybe three cars passed me the whole day. But there's no amenities. You don't have water. You got to bring your own water. There's no bathrooms. There's nothing. There's nothing. So you're exposed. It was extremely hot. I was, you know, I put towels in my 
car windows and just open them and sweat it out for a bunch of hours waiting for dusk before I could really explore. But this place is just massive. And you can see where, you know, the Native Americans treated them as their ancestors. There's so many of these p pillars and rock formations look like people. But I loved how the, I mean, the sky was perfect with these clouds passing because there would be periods like this with, you know, one section completely darked out and others illuminated. And just the way the shadows, you could literally just watch them across the landscape was really cool. But I mean, these monuments, I mean, this is what people build in cities and things like that with monuments and big pillars and all that. But here it is in nature, just from erosion. And this is definitely reminds you of the Wild West, old Western movies. Lots filmed in settings like this. There's your dirt road. I think that's my car with the towels in the window. But an awesome place to be by yourself and to camp out. Looks like a row of people standing. All of these pictures are done with a five-year-old. This was 2013. So a five-year-old smartphone. I was blown away by what that phone could do in terms of pictures and can't even imagine now even way better. So more pillars, more shadows. Finally got to set up my tent. That's one of my favorite ones in terms of getting the sky and the contrast. So with the sky looking like that and the clouds like that, knew it was going to be a good sunset. And then the shadows of these pillars just stretching dozens of miles across the open landscape. There's the tent, corner of the tent. And the sky was great. And the phone definitely did not do this sunset justice. This was almost as epic as the one it captured. The phone captured that sunset last one at the uh, Canyonlands really well, but this one was just as crazy, colorful, epic back there, but didn't do as good of a job, probably because it was focusing on this in the foreground there. So that is the Valley of the Gods. And again, definitely want to time it so you're not there in the middle of the day because I had to sit and sweat for a solid two, three hours, but it is worth going to. And again, just a, a very powerful place. You can tell that there is some mojo going on there as it was a spiritual place for people for thousands of years. So now we're going to head over to Natural Bridges National Monument. And then I forget where we go from there, but I'll see you soon.